Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the Art Department Podcast. It's me again, Jan Urschel here, and with me, my co-host, Emmanuel Shu. Today, we're going to talk about portfolios. What goes into a portfolio? What is a portfolio? Has it changed over the years? And all the ins and outs and pitfalls uh, that as you as an artist Tips can and get tricks. into it. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting topic. And I think there's not just one answer there's not just one way of doing a portfolio and i think uh, um, i think when when we used to think about a portfolio it's like a couple of like printed out pieces of paper that you have in a in a folder and that you go from company to company and show that as a as a physical uh, piece uh -huh. right but i think these days it has it has changed significantly and and it's to a degree where we can't even control anymore how people are going to watch our portfolio and where. Um, so I think there's a lot to discuss. So um, let's let's dive into it. And um, maybe we can first answer really like, so what what is a portfolio? Maybe for some people outside the industry who who are not really familiar with this um, very uh, with this term that I think every artist knows, but maybe people outside don't don't really understand. Yeah, and portfolio can can be a, a, a demo reel as well. Right. I mean, it, it, it's inclusive of anything that is used to show people your work, right. essentially. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, it's just used to show your work and, you know, hopefully in the end is to get some work or get, you know, uh, right. an interview or, or something, get someone to be interested in your work. Exactly. I think it's just pretty as simple as yeah, that, right? That is true. Like, I remember I was... It, I, I used to have, I mean, I went to my first right. job, my portfolios was three floppy disks. Oh, right, and right, right. And it was right. a bunch of images on floppy disks. And, and that was my portfolio uh, all the way to having a, a book that I printed out. Right, so you had uh, both, right? Big, yeah. And it, you know, the truth is nowadays with all the iPads, mm. having a printed book makes you stand out. Actually, it's kind of unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think uh, about how how it was on my end, and uh, I think when when I when I applied to to FCD, I had um, I actually just had a couple of pencil drawings. Unfortunately, I, I tried to look for it, and I couldn't find it anymore. Um, I think it, it it got lost in a in a hard drive crash or whatever. All all the scans of the of my entry portfolio and the one that I had that I, when came coming out of it. Um, but I remember that there was a big um, big emphasis in FCD on on on, on some f something physical. So in the beginning, you draw f you draw on paper yeah. anyway, so you always have something to mm. present. But then afterwards, even even if you draw digitally, you have to um, you have to actually print it out and put it on the wall, that kind of thing. So I think the the, the guys in brainstorm do the same, and it's a, it's a. It's a, it's a nice way of doing it. And um, then in the end, when I came out of FCD, I actually had also, um, I, had a, I had the physical portfolio of the printed out pieces I made during the year. And then I also um, made actually like a little book out of, out of the work I did and printed it with like a um, on-demand printing service online so that by the time... You spent money. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's expensive. Like, Investment. Because it's yeah. like uh, if you print a book on demand, it's like easily $150 um, if, it's, if it has to be big I think enough. it's cheaper now, right? Um, I guess it depends on... I think you could do for 40, 50 yeah, bucks now, I think. think so? I don't know. I don't know. But, but that was like 10, 10 well, years ago. Well, it depends how big, right? Yeah, if you wanted really big hardcover with like a sleeve... That costs you money, right? Um, I think now it's a lot cheaper because that was like 10 years ago. And I think the on-demand um, industry just got started. And so I had I had the, the pages, I had the book, and then I also made like a nice, like a couple of nice like slides on a, on a TV screen to present my work. So I think all of this helped to kind of... Um, slides on a TV screen? Like, yeah, what because for the, for, the, for, the, for the grad show, for example, you had like... Uh, um, you had like huge banners, um, like maybe like two by one meter. And I had three of those. And then I had the book on a table. Then I had the, the printouts on a table. Okay, this is a grad, grad yeah, show. Okay, got Kind it. of business cards and, and uh, like a slideshow on the TV. And uh, I think that helped to kind of stand out because nobody else had a book made. And of course, I could then take the book and bring it to, um, to my uh, interviews as well. And that kind of yeah, I mean, the actually, this is a yeah. 
maybe a good segue to maybe one of the first points for me. I mean, since you, you, you kind of you're talking about this is presentation. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 I think, you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, wow, you know, my work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's good work, so it doesn't matter, you know. And for me, um, I found that it really does matter, especially when I was interviewing and also picking the portfolios. Uh, you know, it's, it's like a, the website uh, analogy where you have the same products, mm -hmm. but a really crappy website and a really well-designed website, you're always going to choose the well-designed website. Right, right. That's true. And that makes so much difference. And standing out is good. Like like you are getting that mm -hmm. book, uh, you know, made. If you go to an interview or you send, let's say you send a book, yeah. you know, okay, that's that's expensive, mm -hmm. right? But let's say you send it to an AD, art director, production designer, somebody that you have a contact. You know, that's even. I mean, obviously the work has to be good, yeah, but course. all things equal, people are really gonna say, hey. Someone sent us a book yeah, yeah. and it looks cool. Exactly. And the work is good. Let's look at it, you know, and this is a good strategy. Uh, you have anything you think about presentation? Yeah, I mean, there's a, I think there's a lot of my personal preference in what I'm about to say, and maybe that will differ, but I think it can never hurt um, because what you said about presentation, about uh, graphic design, about layout, um, there's a lot of people who have great work but then they have an awful website that is so difficult to navigate. Mm. I mean, the the, oh God, the, yes. the, the work, the portfolio has to be good. Like you cannot save a bad portfolio with good graphic design. That's not going to work either. So um, as a baseline, the work has to be good. But then in terms of how you present, it needs to be good, right? The website needs to be clear. It needs to be, I mean even even use something off the shelf you do not you do not need to design your own website right um just just use something nice off the shelf and then customize it to your needs right um and also for like business cards right i mean i don't know how many I mean, people still use business cards right make some nice business cards like if you so what okay so business cards let's let's talk about that what is what do you think do you do they need um it depends for if you go to an event, for example, you definitely, I think, need them N not to pass them to your f like friends or peers or whatever, but to to pass it to companies. Right. Because, again, it's like it, it's it might be very common in other in other industries. But for like at, at art events, I barely see anybody having business cards. So it's almost like a forgotten thing that, again, makes you stand out because everybody else just has their iPad. But if you have an iPad, like you, you can show it to the um, to the company and like flip through. But then once you part ways, there's nothing that nothing physical that the company has to kind of be reminded that when at the end of the day they go back to the hotel or go back to wherever, mm -hmm. like oh they mm -hmm. they might find it in their pocket and and it's like oh okay um, like uh, there was this guy right. So and if you're the only one, then like. So standing it's just, out it's just again. kind of like a reminder right and again mm, the cool. the graphic design i think and everything is very important and also um maybe it's just me but a lot of people just have a very a lot of terrible copy like the the text that accompanies it is full of um full of spelling mistakes typos. and typos and like just, just, and bad use of font, yeah, basically. Just, just get somebody, like you know. it, it doesn't cost you anything to get your mom to look over it or like somebody else, right? Just have anybody just quickly look over it instead of just a lot of people just like uh, put a lot of effort into their images and then they just want to like quickly, quickly like um, upload it and then be done with it, right? But take some time to look over everything again. And I think just in terms of coming back to the book, like one of... Uh, my favorite stories that I heard and I'm, and I hope it's true because I mean, I heard this from somebody else. Um, but I think everybody knows Daniel Simon, the, the, the crazy car designer. So apparently, um, in, in, during his early days, he, he, um, worked at Volkswagen or whatever and Bugatti. And then he, but he wanted to do, um, he wanted to do, um, entertainment design, right? Fantastical stuff. So he actually designed like lots of really cool vehicles in his own time and made a book. Um, and apparently he took that book and, and went to, 
to LA and showed it to like Scott Robertson and all the other people. And they were like blown away because not only was it a, like a, a great, great portfolio of, of, of design, but also like well done. So um, that's the story I heard, and um, I hope it's true because it's a, it's a, it's a good yeah, reminder. I mean, um, but why wouldn't it yeah, be, right? Exactly. I mean, he's successful, exactly. and and I think for anybody, that's that's your conduit to letting somebody see exactly. who you are and what you do. So that portfolio, if it's full of typos, means you don't care about certain things. Exactly. If you don't care about graphic design, it means you don't care about certain other things. And it it, it does talk about who you are, and it may help or it may hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So, you know, no, no guarantees, but it cannot hurt to spell everything right. Exactly. It can't hurt. Right. And it shows that you know, you, it can't yeah. help it hurt if it's well designed, <laughs> you know. But I mean, I would I mean, a tip is for me when I look at uh, uh, when I, if I if I go to a convention and I see a flat portfolio that's like, say, big, bigger than eight by 10. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, 11 by 17 that that's the size I used to have that size actually for a lot of things it, it looks really good it feels really good I've always not liked looking at things on an iPad yeah. because a lot of stuff is not meant to be looked at that small yeah, that's true so you know when you, this is only for conventions yeah. right or, or or meeting the person you know live or something so um, but the other thing is the website and I I'm telling you I, I get websites sent to me all the time. Say, hey, look at my portfolio, and you, you know, you go to the website, and it's crammed full of images. You don't know where to go, and it's an infinite scroll of images. Oh, yeah. And you know, I'm just tired already by the tenth image. I'm like, come on, come on, <laughs> like you got to curate your site. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you'd be surprised how many even professionals who are working. I've I've had people that that have asked me, hey, you know. Give me some feedback on my son. I'm like, dude, you're a seasoned pro. You don't need to show everything under the sun. Exactly. Curate it so that people, because we still, you know, like the production designer or art directors or whoever is going to hire you is still going to go to your site no matter how experienced you exactly. are. They're going to go there. And if they get a good vibe, then there's a good chance they'll call exactly. you. And, and they only have, the, I, I tell you, they only have the attention span of like, you got them for maybe a minute. Exactly, right. Serious. Every, every, they're, they're, and most of the time, yeah, I mean, that's how every, it is. Every, every image, they spend like two seconds on it, right? It's like the, I mean, they are, they are not all, they're also not immune to, to the, the way we consume media now, right? Um, the way we flick through an the endless AP feed type. of stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, they will not pay that much attention. So it really needs to be attention grabbing. But let, let's let's go to the creative side later because I think there's an interesting point about the website stuff. And I'm, like I said in the beginning, like uh, maybe maybe the the definition of portfolio has changed a bit, like because you you don't you do not always have the chance, or actually in in most instances you don't have the chance to to curate your portfolio and have a quiet moment with somebody in a room to show the portfolio. That almost doesn't exist anymore, especially as a freelancer, right? So <clears throat> the, the way that the people who are potentially employing you are going to see your portfolio is going to be through the internet. And then there's also like, if you, if you in the end get them to your website, that is that is the final stage almost that is the at the end of the whole process because once they are, are on your website they are actually a bit more committed to actually only looking at your stuff because they, they, it's only your stuff right there is nothing else but then there's also the vastness of of social media through which a lot of people will find your work right and then um if it's on ArtStation or even worse, if it's on like Facebook or Instagram, right? I mean, we, we get, we get, we get job offers through Instagram, right? That happens now. Um, and then the definition of portfolio changes completely because, um, they might see you, they might see one of your images amongst a, a, a sea of other stuff. And, um, even if they go to your profile, let's say on Instagram, then it, it's going to be kind of like everything you've done ever since you opened your Instagram account. And then the whole idea of curation and, and whatever, like become like kind of gets thrown out of the window. Don't you think? I mean, it, it changes completely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
yeah, you know, you've got work from like six years yeah. ago from you barely, you know, could could draw to like yesterday's hot dog, exactly. you know, that and you it's all ate. cropped and, you know, in like, like weird ways. Yeah. And- so you have to, you know, and that's a really good point on any social media. And this is, you know, Instagram, ArtStation, you know, ArtStation, you can, there are tabs, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can organize, you can make sure, you know, you can make a select tab and people just enter your page and they only see the images you want them to see. And then you can have tabs for other projects. Say Instagram, uh, you, you need to be very careful. If there's some old work you don't want there that you, it doesn't represent who you are now. Don't put it yeah, there you need to actually go through it yes. and delete. Right. Um, in a exactly. Sense. I mean, and, and you got to realize that is for work. If you want your own personal mm-hmm. Instagram about all the food you eat, Go open another account exactly, that has exactly. all the food you eat. But that's for a job. Take it seriously because otherwise people will think you're not taking it serious and they just, well, they'll just, oh, okay, you know, whatever. You know, they, they won't look at it, you know, that serious. And, uh, you know, obviously your website, we talked about it. It should have, you know, you should yeah. really, it doesn't need to be fancy. Yeah, it needs to be, it just clear. Needs to be clear. Yeah, yeah exactly. And. I mean, with with all the graphic design that we talked about before, I hope people don't get confused that they put some like crazy stuff in there and and, and the, the work you do, your work should still be the front and center and it should be the clearest thing on your website. All the graphic design, everything is just there to support. Um, it can, like you said, it can be like an additional kind of thing to emphasize that you are detail oriented, you, you care about this kind of stuff. But First and foremost, it's about clarity and about, professional. Yeah, professional. It's about clarity, about uh, user experience that people can find your stuff with as little clicks as possible, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, for for me, it's really, it's really, it's really strange. Like, I mean, company like certain websites actually, like I know that I think Behance does that when you actually delete old stuff or if you delete stuff from your portfolio, it actually will subtract the the likes you got for that from your all over like like number or whatever so i think maybe mm. some people like I'm, I'm sure people get hesitant about deleting stuff because it's actually decreasing your number so even though well, instagram doesn't have that anymore <laughs> yeah. doesn't have that yeah. anymore that's it's gone. awful yeah but so, it's, it's something you know you can delete anything mm. yeah it used to be yeah that like that but you know again but don't worry about likes right now this is a presentation method mm. is a method for you to to get your work out there so that people see who you are with the work you're most proud of that's it exactly i noticed for myself though right um that sometimes like i get jobs based on work that somehow somebody found that is like six seven years ago and um and they said like, oh, I really like the stuff you did for that project in 2012. And I'm like, oh, crap, maybe maybe I shouldn't delete my really old stuff um, because it still can can generate some jobs. But what do you think about that? I mean, I don't think that it's, you should delete old stuff. I think you should delete stuff that you think doesn't represent you anymore. Right, that's good. Yeah. You know, because I mean, old stuff, I mean, the Hellboy stuff I have is like 15 years old or yeah. more and and i i still love it and it's still on my site so i mean i don't care that's good. but uh, you that's know but point. some other stuff I'm like, oh, we'll take that. <laughs> yeah that's a very good point yeah it's it's like you said it does it still represent me is it still i mean the, the important point is that companies people will hire you based on on your portfolio and they will hire you for work that is similar to to your portfolio right um Right. So, you know, if you have, you know, a lot of renderings of shoes, people going there are going to want you to render shoes. So be mindful of what you are wanting to put in your portfolio, because that's probably what you're going to be hired to do. Uh, And I know that a lot of people are going to be like, well, I'll just put everything in there. Yeah, I want to work on everything. everything. Yeah. Which is my one of the things that I always advise against. Um, and that's, you know, disclaimer, this is all our opinions, yeah. obviously, uh, it is not like a, oh, this is a guaranteed way, but that's my opinion yeah. because I, I, I'm, I always subscribe to you, you know, you have a lot of different knives. You can't sharpen all the knives all at once and they're all as sharp. You have to choose the one that you really want to sharpen and sharpen that knife. You get that really sharp, then you pick up the next one. 
But the thing is, they, you know, they're juggling all the oh, character design. Yeah, I want to yeah. do props. I want to do environments, and I want to do. And then, and then, so you stuff that all into a portfolio. It's super long, and then none of it is really strong. It's really half baked. Yeah. So, think of it from the hiring <clears throat> point of view. <clears throat> for anybody out there looking for a job, think about it. If you're going to apply for a job at some place, whatever that place might be, think about what they want. It's not about it's you know you want a job too, but what do they want? Why why should they hire you? So if they're saying we want a character designer, do they want to see environment designs? Maybe not. No. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they want to see really good character designs and not so much environment designs. And but I've seen people like oh I'm gonna throw everything at the kitchen sink at it, and they think, you know they're they're doing the due diligence, but I actually think a lot of times they're not. And which leads me to, they they do your research. Right, right. That's, right. I mean, if you're gonna apply to Riot, you may have a portfolio for different companies in different genres, right? If or, you know, if you're gonna do one for animation because you you like that, uh, fine. And then you have one for like, let's say games. That's different. It's gonna be different. Right. Uh, or one for live action uh, and. If you do your research and say, okay, I'm applying to Riot, what do they want? If you're going to give them a lot of, let's say, really, uh, I mean, Pixar is a good example, right? I want to go to Pixar. Am I going to show them my uh, gory photo bash live action reel? Or am I going to try to be more story oriented and, uh, and, and a little bit looser style uh, like Pixar does? Research. Right. You know, so I mean, everything's out there, right? Definitely. I mean, so there, there's a lot of stuff in there, and, and and I'm trying to kind of think from a perspective of of a student or somebody who's trying to get into a company, right? I mean, um, so I think a lot of people are just very lost in overall, right? They they think like, okay, how do I get hired? And and uh, of course, it's always uh, what we said before like in in the end nobody cares about your degree it's all about the portfolio and then they go like okay so what 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 is in a portfolio and you you mentioned just now that i mean you, you like for different companies you have to have different portfolios but so i mean one thing that i'm always being asked is like okay so i want to like should should i focus all my energy and all my portfolio onto one company And like, let's say, let's say I really, let's say I really want to get into Naughty Dog, right? And I make a portfolio that, let's say, looks like the stuff that you see online from, from The Last of Us, from, um, from Uncharted. And you do that and then, and then Naughty Dog says, oh, sorry, you're not good enough. We're not going to hire you, which they probably say to 99% of people because I'm sure they're getting tons and tons of um, um, like applications, but so, and then, and then what happens now? Like you don't get hired, um, for Naughty Dog and then all your portfolios focused on that. And, and now what, like, do you, do you I mean, how, how, how do, how do we advise people? How do we go about that? Um, right? Because I'm, okay, so, because my position mm -hmm. is I'm, I'm actually recommending against that, but please, I want to, I want to hear your thoughts first. You're recommending against uh, doing different. I'm recommending portfolio? putting all, I'm recommending against putting all your energy into one style at one company. Just put all your yeah, eggs yeah, in one yeah. basket. I mean, kind of basically. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, uh, uh, style is something that, you know, I mean, you, you could, you know, from one day to the next, you know, have a different way of representing what you want to, you mm. know, artistic form. But uh, design is design. That's not a style. It's always going right. to, you know, matter. Uh, so it, it'll show through. Uh, but I think that when you are submitting for uh, for different companies, I think it's just a matter of knowing, like, because even for me, you know, each show that I say, uh, turn in my portfolio for, I think long and hard about what they want. Mm -hmm. So each show is like a place, right? Naughty Dog, mm -hmm. Blizzard, Riot. They're very different in terms of what they yeah. want and what they need. And I think it's not so much do a different portfolio. It's just adjusting, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you might say, well, I have a whole bunch of animation stuff. I put that in one portfolio. And then I have a lot of live action, more cinematic, 
uh, realistic stuff, I put it on another one. And maybe so you have like two portfolios. Mm -hmm. And then you can shop that around right. instead of saying, well, I'll have one. I'm going to put all my animation, right. all my live action, all my game stuff, all in one. Yeah. You know, and then it's not targeted anymore. It's not focused. So, and I think most people have the capability of doing multiple so things. So you always recommend like um, you should actually try out a variety of styles and then and then it's important how you package it, right? You should not. I mean, style is actually a difficult topic, but um, you, 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 should, you should have a variety of, of topics you, you, you tackle in your portfolio and then it's how you package it to depending on which company. Is that what you're saying? Sure. I mean, I think that, that yeah, uh, yes, in a way, I think it's just a matter of, okay, you know, you do you, mm. basically you learn, you do your art, and then you, you know, you have a body of work now. And you look at that body of work and say, well, is it consistent? If it is, then that's it. That's your portfolio. And you use that, you know, because you, that is, that's all you got. If you look at it and you say, well, I have a couple different styles that I experimented with and I have a body of work that's different, like animation and some live action, then you can separate it right. and use it for the different genres. And it really depends. But most people are going to be very targeted anyway. I mean, they're, they're going to be probably more like, oh, animation you know but even for me like if i if i was going for a, a job uh and i said okay um it's this movie uh let's say it's uh um you know like a like a historical movie and i really want to get in on it uh and i don't know that i would show them a lot of my sci-fi stuff right yes yeah. it doesn't really, really apply sense, yeah. and, and i'm going to show them and then I'll look at the production designer, like, what does he like? And the director, what does he like? Right. I'll, I'll research that and I'll go, okay, that production designer, th these movies. So he's going to be capable of thinking about like really loose sketches. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's more of that because in my portfolio and in most people's portfolio, they have, they, they can probably whip up, you know, their sketches right. and then there's more fit work and then there's stuff in between, right. uh, there's design, you know, showing more design. So I think it's a matter of really looking at your portfolio and go, okay, you know, is there different styles? And if there is, can I separate it into multiple portfolios instead of squish it all into right. one, then it's not coherent anymore. Right. And uh, and also, if I'm going to go for a job, let's say I want to get into to Pixar, right. you have to really think about what do they want? Right. And if they want sketches, do I have sketches? Oh, I do. I have a bunch. Okay, I'll use those and put that you know, in the portfolio instead of putting all my hardcore renderings because Pixar doesn't like mm, that. Right. They don't want to see hardcore. They want to see thinking and storytelling and they want to see who you are. So if you start showing them matte paintings, they're not gonna want to see that. Right. They'll just yep. they'll say no Doesn't immediately. Sense, yeah. But if you bring out, so it's just basically taking out in your portfolio in your bag of tricks what you have, right? You say, oh, I do a lot of sketches. I'll put that over there. I didn't realize people want to see it, but if you did your research, Pixar wants to see right. that. Right. I don't know. What do you think about that? Um, it's. I think this this applies very well to. I mean, the the, the whole curation, the the packaging part is very important. Um, but I think it, this this applies very much to to people who are already in the industry, right? Wouldn't you say? I mean, they they have well, a lot to you know, draw the, from. The funny thing is, uh, I'll tell you a, a story. Uh, like a couple of years ago, somebody asked me that's already working mm. in the union and said, "Hey, can you take a look at my website?" I'm actually having I'm 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 needing work and I'm I feel like I'm not getting the work I want you know so can you take a look just you know as a friend you know to to see and I took a look and I'm like wow you're a 10 year industry pro and he was putting everything into the site right. and I'm like no it's like it's like a making a painting that's super busy I don't know where to look right. I don't know what you want to do I, you know, characters, props, you know, it's like everything. I'm like, do you like props? He's like, no, not really. I'm like, then what is it doing up there? So it's basically the same as a portfolio, right? Put what you want, put the style you want, and then that's going to represent you. Don't put everything under the sun. 
And I think a lot of people do that. And that's my biggest thing. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, to do that, that analogy of, of consider, your, consider your portfolio as a painting, right? So that also means you have to, you have to direct the people where to look, where to look at first, right? Um, that's a very good point. Um, but let, let, let's, yeah, and, yeah go yeah. ahead. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, a bit of a time delay here. But um, let's, let's talk maybe a little bit about um, what we would recommend people who are new to the industry um like how, how should they how should how should they structure maybe their portfolio or maybe not in structure but how how should they approach um making a portfolio out of um work that is not necessarily made for made for previous projects made for previous companies but something as an entry level like um there's always a big debate about like um there's always a big debate about Like, do they want to see like uh, or originality? Do they want to sh see style over anything else? Or I guess we're getting into that now. We, we, we should. <laughs> we have to. We have to. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, talk that's a it. that's a big one. And 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 um, well, what makes you sense, know I, right? in in yeah you know, in preparation for this yeah. very topic. I mean, actually, I talked to a few people, and I talked to people from different industries. Right. So because I um. I mean, I looked at a lot. I mean, I do a lot of portfolio reviews, right. um, and when I do, I see a lot of people um, putting in things that they may not be best suited for at that moment, skill-wise. Um, and I, I always think that yes, you know, having a voice uh, and being unique, you know, that's the only. Well, I mean, the, your voice is the only unique thing about exactly. you, right? And, and it definitely needs to be shown, but you also need the technical skill to be able to show right. that. And I think that at the beginning, rather than going sort of, you know, like, like I had some uh, portfolios where they will go hardcore sci-fi, right. but they haven't learned the design thinking and problem solving exactly. yet. So now you're going to do something that's going to show your weakness. And a portfolio is there to show your strengths, yeah. because I mean, you know, you you got to show what you can do. You're not you can't show you know you you're not there to show what you can't do. Yeah. Uh, but when you show a design like, oh, I'm going to do a sci-fi spaceship and and whole environment and whole all this stuff, and it shows that oh, you can't really problem solve, then people are going to think, well, you can't problem solve, we can't hire you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I'm not saying don't express yourself mm. because you may love sci-fi, but I, I think that you have to temper it with what is your skill set right now. Right. And and do you need a job right now? If you don't need a job, then that's okay. You know, do what you want. But I think that if you're if that portfolio is for you to get a job, then then it there needs to be a need for what you do. Um. So. For a lot of those people, I would say, okay, instead of doing a sci-fi environment, how about trying to do um, a medieval castle? Learn how that's built and why it's built. Right. Do a factory. Do something, you know, something that you can research, right. understand, and learn from. You still need to compose it. You still need to light it. You still need to design something in it. Right. But it's not as crazy as going full sci-fi and then it's anything you want right it's true it's true. so a lot of times when they start out it's like they do this sci-fi thing and it's like what is it oh i don't know it's a flying hot dog because <laughs> i like it. you know and i'm like well okay but i don't know if people are really gonna dig that yeah. because you have you, you haven't put forth a problem to solve yeah. it's a very but yeah. first so i would always suggest them to to kind of go back but anyway that's a lot what no, do you it's, think? it's it's a it's a, it's a good expression of i think what a lot of people are thinking and i think um this statement alone would rub a lot of people the wrong way um even i think industry people um who who would who would give recommendations about portfolios but i think we need to put it in the right light um so i think what 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 interests a lot of people in getting into this industry and not only talking about like students who are really young because like you said students who are really young they should by all means take their time and go go to a design school learn about design learn about presentation techniques and all these kind of things right spend for yeah, and they, and that those schools will bring yeah, you exactly. they will slowly bring you up to 
do the sci-fi exactly. and what you want. That will take four to five years, right? But let's let's say. But what if you're self-taught? What if you're right? self-taught? I mean, what if you don't have a design education? What if all you can really rely on, because that's in your budget, that's um, just I don't know your your economic social situation is just uh, not in such a way that you are comfortable or able to spend a quarter million dollars on a proper design education in the States, right? Um, that's, I think, counts for most of us. So what about the people who um, try to make even, uh, who are either, either self-taught or who make a, a shift into a different industry? Because um, I, I think based on, on, on the episode we did about age, right, there's a lot of people, a lot of stories we got of people who are trying to make the jump. And for them, The, the, the focus is on making a portfolio and getting a job, right? And there's often not the time to grind through four years of horrible, miserable designs to arrive at something that is more useful to the client. Yeah, and pay that much. Exactly. Too, and, and forego the amount of time of, of like payment through other jobs, right? And all this kind of stuff and pay the money for tuition or whatever. So um, what about those? And I think this what you said is really geared for for a lot of people um, that are in those situations. And um, I, I and it's it's very true that I mean you have to deal with all these kind of things of of how to present how to the composition camera lighting the technical skills that if you add on top um, how to design at the same time then it's gonna make you a lot slower right um, the problem I think comes where a lot of people are drawn to this industry because of all the cool funky stuff we do all the spaceships and and all the crazy aliens, right? That's why you just get an enormous amount of terribly done spaceships and 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 creature designs and whatnot, um, because people are not follow. People are not maybe like you said, spending enough time on the right things. Um, and I, I remember that from my FZD days that. Um, There was a point um, in the beginning. It's all about like technical development, about um, mm -hmm. um, getting getting some technical skill on how to put things, how to present 3D objects in a 2D space, um, and, and how to express that. And then, then there's sort of like a hidden test. I mean, and I took it as a hidden test because suddenly you're stepping away from. Uh, drawing things based on real life, like sketch, like you sketching a lot from real life, or you're designing, like you said, castles, right? Something real world you can research and and um, then emulate. But then there's a test, kind of like at the the beginning of the second term. I don't know if they still have that. But suddenly you're tasked to draw robots, and I think most most batches, most people fail that test horribly and I'm my, myself including because suddenly you have to combine these uh, technical skills with a design skill, which most people just still don't have at that point. And it turns mm -hmm. out horrible, like everybody's robots are just complete garbage. Um, and <laughs> usually that is followed by some, some um, reality adjustment by the teachers to uh, uh, show like okay like okay you you guys really have no clue what you're doing and then you kind of go back to the drawing board and you 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 kind of uh, start again with some more historic stuff or something more research based and i remember that because that really broke a lot of people i think um like just but sometimes it's meant to yeah, do exactly. that right? it's meant to break you they kind of test you can't you. deal with yeah that. they test you to see if you can pick yourself up again um, which which was uh, just reminded me of this uh, whole thing that we're talking about and um, yeah so I totally agree that um, it might be a better idea to to take things slowly and not I mean kind of put that urge of you wanting to be the best spaceship designer in the world um, on the back burner for a while and work on like what you said your problem solving skills on on your presentation skills and all these kind of things um i don't know design some interesting world war ii tanks because again it's based on um based on function, based on function. you can research on it you can read books about it you can you can study the mechanics you can uh You can just see how, 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 how they look like and how they function. And then you can slowly go from there and build futuristic tanks 
once you got a really good hold of so the current thing. Here's where a lot of people are probably going, but I have a voice, <laughs> but I have, you know, it's not just sci-fi or spaceships, but some people say, well, I really want to show something in a really weird stylistic mm -hmm. way because I have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I would say that voice is good. And honestly, you, cause you and I are mostly sort of games yeah. slash film, yeah. Uh, you know, in that industry. So I actually made a call yesterday to a production designer in, in an animated movie. And I said, hey, look, talk to me. Let me know what you think about this voice uh, thing. What, what, what do you look for? I asked him specifically, what do you look for? He says, well, you know, you know not only does he, he looks for personality, but he, you know, in a portfolio, uh, obviously skill is important. Right. But voice is also important. So, but you have to have enough skill to back up the voice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the tricky right, part, right. right? Because if your voice is up here and you got a lot of voice, but you can't draw, yeah. they still can't hire right, you. Right. You have to be at a certain level where, okay, um, you good voice, unique point of view, and passable skills. Okay, I can teach skill, right, right. so no problem, I'll hire you. Versus super high skill, rendering great, no voice. So he said that he would pick the voice and passable right, skills. Right, right. But what is a passable right. skill? So that's the thing. It's like some of the people I, I look at, they don't have even passable skill because they don't understand the core of design right. or problem solving, right? So it's like what you're saying. So get up to a certain point and you, you know, for the self-taught people, that's the hard part because no one's there to tell them whether you've, you are doing the right thing or not. Right, right. So they just kind of go, okay, well, you know, I like spaceships uh, or I like <laughs> anime. I'm just going to do that. Exactly. Because, I mean, there's nobody else. There's no one to tell them yeah, of course, anything. Of and so for these people, I say, okay, instead of spending 200000 on on education, which you will get something from it, but why don't you spend $2,000 and get professional opinion mm, that's a good point at different stages of your life that's right great. i mean that's a lot less than you know but that's still something right go to the people you trust that you think you like their work and say look i'm willing to pay for your time look at what i got give me my your honest opinion they'll give it and then you then you can kind of go okay i he said i need to look at this this and that okay i'm going to go practice right. that come back in half a right. year that's a, a way, that's a good way yeah. uh, and, and, I, and I know this is kind of segueing off a little bit on the portfolio, but I also see this a lot in my portfolio reviews and it drives me nuts because I feel like everybody is just, they are very hardworking, mm, yeah. you know, and they, they are just, it's because, you know, you're self-taught that you don't really understand. That's what being at a school is good for because when you go through all those fundamentals and all the stuff, and your teachers, hopefully if they do their, your job right, they've structured a road for you. So you've been learning design. You've been learning how to draw at the same time. You've been learning how to paint at the same time. It's all happening like you at FCD. Yeah. And that's why when you come out, you were able to get a job. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's a know? good point. That's a good point. Yeah. And on the debate, was like technical skill versus um, what, what you called it voice, right? Like you're your originality or whatever you want to call it right um i remember from yeah. school days they always told us that you need to you need to have both you need to have both right um but if anything your technical like if it's going to be a safer way to get hired if your technical skill is a bit better than your your originality right okay now that, that's my opinion too mm, yeah <laughs> but the problem is uh um i, I know for a fact that if you go to Pixar, if you want to go to Pixar, your creativity, voice, originality, whatever you want to call it, is really key. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They want to see that, you know, you really have that. But you're going to Pixar. They're still going to expect you to have a technical oh, yeah. skill that at, is at least at a certain yeah, level. Exactly. And your portfolio needs to show that. Exactly. And I, it depends on how bad you need work, right? If I really need it work, and I say, okay, I want to do environment design, you know, concept right. design. You know, I would probably go and say, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to look at real world things that I can riff off right. of and say, 
uh, make a understand castles and make a uber castle right you know whatever but at least it's based off of something and you know it's you can research it you can understand it you can learn the basics of design with something that's easily digestible and 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 i would have a bunch of images from that and then use that as my as my demo and then and then our portfolio and then when you put the portfolio out it will be strong and you'll most probably get hired but same person if they say okay i'm not going to do that i'm just going to go for the sci-fi alien mm. world that's what i'm going to do i'm going to speak my voice and i'm like okay that's awesome but the problem is they haven't they say okay they do this world and it's just like hey i like this and i'm like well why you know why is this like this and why is that like that? No idea. <laughs> and then it's it's and then not only so that shows a lack of sort of real uh, thinking, mm -hmm. right? And 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 holding yourself accountable for like the reason the rocks are floating in the Avatar is because of the gravity. There's a reason for that. Why is something growing that big? Because there's no there's a lack of gravity. Then things will grow differently. And you have to start thinking about it and your shape language would be like this and then they'll be like that and you have to understand all the stuff but if you don't have any of that and you just kind of go well i like blue and i like balls and i like the you know in the sky and that's it <laughs> uh, yeah that's that's very i don't know that might be a problem it's like if you want to do a spaceship learn how to do a car learn how to do a tank right you have to understand like how something flies right exactly so if you don't understand that, but you go all the way to the spaceship already, then I'm like, I ask people, well, how's it going to land? Oh, it's in space. <laughs> it's always just the answer. But I'm like, why well, is it never going to go to a planet ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, stuff like that. And and I think for a lot of people, I think it's good to, to, to play. But the problem is, you know, are you limited by your skill? And, you know, it's always back to the same problem. Do you want to get hired now? Right. And if you want to get hired, then you're going to have to solve your client's problem. And if your client's problem, most of them are going to want you to at least I know for live action skill. And, and, and I, I'm not saying this as a blanket statement, but from my experience on the shows that I've been on, it's really been more about having the right skills. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, of course, having sort of I, I don't know. I mean, maybe uh some form of creativity, but I, I think that when you're doing uh, live action, it's all a lot about realism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think a lot of like say on Blade Runner, you know, like what like uh, Mike Hill did, you know, on the design right, of right. that thing, you know, it looks real right. and it looks like it could work, right. and that's a sci-fi good solid sci-fi design. And that guy thinks a yeah. lot. He's a designer and he's an artist and it shows yeah. so but it took years to get there you know at the beginning i think showing skill to me is probably the more sure way to get hired right but there is the animation field and yeah, i can't different thing yeah. i can't really speak you know i can only speak with you know who i spoke to yesterday and he said you know the i need you to have a voice right. you know like i spoke to goro before and he's like you know, I want to see you in the portfolio. Right. I, I think that's important, mm -hmm. but I, I, not at the uh, at the cost of technical skill. Right. I don't want to see you and then like I, you can barely draw. Right, right. You know, like that can't be like yeah. that. You know, it has to have a. a um, but I, I do feel bad for uh, a lot of self-taught um, artists because they don't really. You know, it's a longer road. Mm. Um, sure. It's just you know you're you're basically essentially getting in your car and you're driving without any GPS, any map, any direction, and you're just kind of going. I know I need to go south, but yeah, yeah. And then you just keep driving, and then you get to a certain point, like, okay, okay I think I'm going south. Okay. Exactly, you, <laughs> you know, you'll like, get there, but it's just how how efficiently, how quickly are you going to get there? How many times do you have to refill your gas tank before before you? Uh, before you run out of it so um i mean this is a tough topic because mm. i actually you know spoke a long time with my wife about it uh she's an educator uh you know and and i you know it's one of those things where it's 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 a hard one you know because everybody wants to express themselves that's why they're doing art you know most of it you know who, who doesn't want to just do what they want to do but at the same time you kind of have to 
it's a rite of passage. You have to understand how to solve yeah. problems. So when I was talking to uh, Jason yesterday, he was like, you got to be able to solve problems. Right. I hire people. I need to look at your even portfolio. Animation. Yeah. And, yeah. I, well, no, that's even bigger. Right. He's like, I need to look at your portfolio and go, you can solve problems. Right. Because I'm going to give you problems. You're not just going to render right. it, right? I don't want you just to render. I want you to solve the problem and I'll also be able to, you know, sort of illustrate exactly. it, you know? And to him, that was super important, being able to problem solve. Right. And, you know, obviously when you problem solve, you're bringing a lot of you, you know, it's into like it, how right? You, he wants to see how you solve the problem, right? Not somebody else, exactly. how you do it. So I think the voice may be more like that. Let's see your problem solving skills, pers you know, from a personal point of view, like how do you do it? And if you vibe, we vibe, then great. And you need to have the skills to back up that, that problem solving. I mean, because in our field, it's really all problem solving. Exactly. Exactly. You're just, you're solving problems, right? Oh, you need a, you know, whatever world. Okay. I solve that problem, you yeah. know? Oh, you know. But that world has this kind of vehicle. Okay, I gotta solve yeah. that problem. But people, I guess, because because we solve problems in a visual way, people often misunderstand that aspect um, as like, okay, we're just we're just noodling something, we're just doodling around, and and uh, and just eventually it comes out of it, right? They often often gets confusing for people on the outside because they just see pretty images because that's what we put online, and then they think that's all there is to it. But they they don't see the intent behind it. Um, for what project was it done? For what what problem did it solve, right? And um, I think there's a lot of a lot of um, yeah, and who are you solving it yeah. for? I mean, I always say this this uh, story when I was on Hellboy, um, and you know, I had just started at the company, and we we're like, okay, let's try to get something approved, and we were not, so, you know, we were having a hard time getting things approved, and I went and listened to uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, movie, uh, you know, in the extra, you know, in his uh, director's commentary, I went and listened yeah. to it, and. And I realized, okay, this guy likes this, he likes this, and he likes that. Okay, I'm going to solve my problem in the way that he can understand. Right. That vibes with him. And then the next thing was approved. Yeah, exactly. It, it's really that simple. And, you know, it's like if you go, if you want to be hired, like say with Pixar or Netflix or whatever animation, what do they want to see from you? How do they want to see you solving a problem? What kind of problems do they want to solve? Yeah. Like if you know you're gonna that place, this guy's the production designer. Look up his work. Look at how he solves right, problems. Right. Look at his Guess background. What? If you yeah. solve, yeah, if you solve a problem like what he does, well, you're gonna have a good chance of getting that job. Exactly, and it's it's as much and, problem solving yeah. for for the given problem for the project, but also for the person you're working with. Yeah, that's a very good point, and. Um, yeah, it really depends also where your where your production designer comes from, right? Is he is he a fine artist? Is he uh, is he a musician? Is he an uh, architect, right? Depending on on that, he might like different forms of presentation, different kinds of uh, problem solving, right? And and uh, this is his way of doing it, and you need to keep that in mind. And that's that's the research part yeah. of it, where I think that's actually one of the biggest things, because I'm like, you may have all the stuff. But until you know who you're going to talk to, you don't know how to put it together. Right. You don't know what to show. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, because, you know, going through school and or even self-taught, you're going to have a lot of stuff around and not all of it is good, you know, um, and, and you have to be really careful. But that, that also leads to like a very, you know, there are very simplistic rules on how to put together a portfolio. Like for me, I think uh, length of portfolio is very important. Mm -hmm. Like I, I suggest uh, 12 to 16 pieces max. Yeah, yeah at most. I'm, I'm already getting tired at, at 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my philosophy is first image is your strongest yeah. because it's, it starts off showing what you, you know, that's their first impression yeah, of you. You need to get people So they hooked. want to see you dressed yeah. up looking good, yeah. right? They look at it and they go, looks good. Now from the second image, to like the 10th image is just, okay, 
good. Confirmation, 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 confirmation. It's just confirming yeah. that, okay, this guy's pretty good because the first image, confirmation. And you get to the end of the portfolio and it's like they're getting a little sort of, they're forgetting the previous yeah, images already. already because that's just how people yeah. are. You want to remind them why you're good. You punch them in, you know, with a couple good images and you end. And I always tell people, you if you have a shorter portfolio, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because... They'll ask for more if it's not exactly, enough yeah. because they're interested, yeah, right? Yeah. They're, oh, this is good, but hey, how come only four pieces? <laughs> yeah, four is a bit little, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if there's four awesome pieces, wouldn't you ask for more? Definitely, yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, but then those four images need to be so super strong. I mean, you can actually tell a lot about an artist, I think, with even even one single image. Um, but oh. yeah, you, you, that's, you're right. It's the kind of like the confirmation that, yeah, they can do different things. They can do this, they can do that. Um, just to like re, re reinforce what you've already shown them with the first image, right? Um, the hardest thing is when it's like you're on your twentieth page uh, and you're kind of like, yeah. I'm at, oh, it's oh. like still halfway through only. <laughs> you know, when I was watching demo reels when I was hiring, you know, back when it was demo reels, uh, thirty seconds all I gave. Yeah, yeah at most, yeah. It's like tiring. if you don't hold my attention in 30 seconds, it, it's in the trash. Exactly. And I was brutal <laughs> because guess what? I have 50 to review. Mm, indeed. I don't got time for this and because that's my job on top of being a supervisor on top of working. Exactly right. Like, come on, man. I'm not going to spend my day just looking at this stuff, right. right? So, you know, I was like, okay, that's okay. I mean, if you kept your best work to the end, then uh, sorry, yeah, no, I didn't see no. it. <laughs> That can't be that way, right? Um, not anymore these yeah. days anyway. Yeah, there's just too many. You have to be mindful of other people's time, right? Don't don't waste their time. Be be respectful of that, right? And don't have a five yeah, minute. And here's the other thing I do is I send, you know, if I'm sending it to somebody, I send, I mean, obviously, if they have instructions on where to put and links and all that, follow that. But if they have none of that, usually what I do is I email my PDF. Right. Right. I make a PDF that's not like 50 megs so that people have to download it five hours. Something that's reasonable, like under 10 megs. Uh, and, and because the reason I found is that people are much more likely to click on that and just open their PDF on the desktop or on the phone than to go hit a website, then go load your website and then go look through your website. It's just not going to happen. But in the PDF, you just scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, good. Call them. Exactly. Right. That's usually what I found. And also put the link in your email so that they have a choice. Yeah, and have a, have a way to contact you, right? Phone number, email. Like a lot of people just don't even do that. I think it was just the other day there was some, some beautiful images, but then there was, I couldn't figure out who the, what the name was on the image. I couldn't figure out any way of, of any point of contact. And it's, it's those basic things sometimes. Yeah, that, that that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing that I need to actually do because I don't ever sign my stuff. <laughs> I don't ever put anything and I'm like, okay, that's kind of dumb, but you know, okay, I'm, I'm guilty, but, um, whatever the case is, uh, I just, just remember, you know, you're making it easier for them yeah. to click on exactly. your stuff, to look at your stuff and know that 90%, oh, I, I wouldn't say 90, I don't know the percentage, but a high percentage of people looking now are looking on a phone or a exactly, tablet. Exactly. Right. So you have to keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. So, you know, if you start putting things and expect them to see it big and scroll in and zoom in and all that, you, they may not do that. Exactly. So make sure it reads, you know, and sell your skills, you know. I mean, if I am a super painter, then I'm just going to put paint. I'm not going to start putting my designs in there because then people are going to go, oh, what the hell? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> but maybe my paintings will get enough, will we'll get the job, right? They say, hey, we have an entry level background painter. Why don't you come in and work there and then you can kind of ramp up and say, hey, you know, I also do some design, show your, th oh, these aren't so good, but you might want to work on them. And then maybe a year or two later, you actually change to that position. Exactly, right. But at least you're working. Right. But if you, sh if you showed your designs at the beginning saying, hey, I'm a designer, then you may have never even gotten a job at that company. Yeah, that's a good point that this is a, this is a, a long-term thing and you can't, you can't just expect that um, if you want to make a quick career transition, you can't just expect that you're going to get your dream job right at the first stage. It's not going to, it's yeah. in most cases, it will it's, not happen it, that way. The funniest thing is yesterday when I talked to Jason, I, 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 
you know, I kept asking him those questions, but the first thing he said every time, and for those people who are just getting a job because they're new to the industry, yeah. I would suggest getting a job in-house because you need to learn. Yeah. You need to learn from your peers. You need to learn from the people who have more experience from you. And Jason's word to me was, I want to work with somebody good personality wise. I want to work with somebody who I can actually work right. with. Um, and that's important. And and I think all this comes through in sort of, uh, you know, in the interview part, obviously, right? But, you know, your portfolio gets you that interview. Right. But you still got to... You know, I, I consider portfolio also part of, you know, like when you go to the interview, what do you do? You know, how do you come across right. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But just remember, it's important. Definitely. You know, and and you're aiming for an in-house job for most people. I would say at the beginning, yeah. don't even think about freelance because it's, you know, it's you don't have you need that support system at work. Because, you know, the, your, your art director is going to say, all right, you're working freelance. Here's the problem. Solve it for me. And you're going to be like, oh, my God, I've never even thought about that problem. <laughs> Who are you going to ask? Yeah. Who are you going to talk true. to? It's true. You know, I, for the first 10 years of my, my working, my career, I was always in yeah, house. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I learned the most it's, there. It's, yeah. n it's, not, it's not like uh, people can't do it, right? I mean, of course, there's going to be people who are able to do this. But it's it's even for them it's a lot harder, and I think yeah for most people I mean I, I say the exact same thing for most people is is that you should like learn the ropes by working in a company and and and, and do your time basically right um, it's gonna it's gonna take a while right and you you basically don't know anything about how like it's it's easy to believe that it's just it's just I do the work and then hand it off and then it, everybody's happy right but without really understanding how your work is going to be used it's uh, I, I think it's difficult it's difficult because again we're not we're not fine artists we don't we don't do art for the sake of art right we, we're, we're producing blueprints um, for but we're commercial exactly. artists I mean that's what we are and if you're a fine artist by all means express. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, draw one line on a canvas and call that art. I have no issue with yeah. that because I think art has a place. Oh, definitely, yeah. But that's what we do. Exactly. That's not what we that's do. That's where you have to find your um, personal yeah. compromise between like, I want to be original, I want to have a voice, I want to be me. Um, but at the same time, you want to work in a, in a commercial industry. Um, and that's just for most people not going to work. I mean, there are always exceptions of people whose style has captivated the 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 some some producers some executives and who said like i need this guy for making this movie okay so and, good a good story on yeah. that is there was a guy who you know who had exactly what you mm -hmm. said right the style and he did this and this director really liked it and so he worked on it on godzilla right. uh and that's all he did was his style on that right. thing so that's great but in the end he doesn't get hired much except for exactly, that job. Exactly, right. So you got that one gig, and, and, but... And, yeah, you got that one gig, so you want to keep working or do you, you know... So the other thing is, I've talked to a lot of these production designers and they've said to me, hey, honestly, who I'm trying to hire is somebody good in terms of personality, a good personality so that, that I can direct yeah. them. And, I, and it's, it doesn't make my life miserable every day. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and I, I really just want them to do what I want. They are an extension of me yeah. because I'm the production designer. Exactly. You, you can have the biggest voice in the world. Uh, I, but do I want you to solve a problem? Yes. But I want you to solve a problem my way. Exactly. Yeah. And if you don't, if you can't adapt to that. You know, yeah. Doors over there. Yeah. Because they, you know, they want their vision there. They don't want your vision. Exactly. They want their vision. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, my vision is I like round things and, you know, I, I'm partial to these kind of shapes. So why don't you think like me and solve the problem like I would? That's what they really want. <laughs> if you think about yeah, it. That's true. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been in a job where they go, hey, I really want to know what you think. <laughs> that's maybe what they want to tell you in the beginning in the interview, but it's never the case. Right. Um, I, no, I, nobody's ever told oh, me really? that. And, and I think I've. You know, I, and I've always accepted the fact that I'm working for you. Of course, of course. You, I have, you have every right to want 
your vision imposed on me, and I will try to read you and your vision and try to give you something that you like. That I've always known that that was of the course, job, yeah. and I've should, never had a problem. That's how you should treat it, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, for a lot of people, they're going to be like, no, no, voice, voice, you know, yeah. creativity. And I'm like, yes. Uh, and I, I, I think it's important. But I also think that, um, you know, especially for people starting out, um, you need a balance. I mean, people look at look at the products we make and it's they just see the end product. They see the result of it. But and then they attribute all that to the person who's, whose name is on, on that piece of of art but they don't see the process behind it and i think it's very important that uh, yeah, they don't understand so much input goes exactly, into it right? right every day your production designers on the call going no why don't you try that why don't you do that i mean exactly, you know it's exactly, a lot of right? collaboration and that's why personalities have to match exactly exactly and you will Literally i talking. mean you will yeah. not be able to make it right for everybody it's not gonna it's not gonna be like that there's always going to be people who just don't get along together and you just have to accept that right um yeah that's kind of what i yeah, would no. say to that <laughs> cool no yeah i mean absolutely i i you know because portfolio i think a lot of people kind of just think you know i'm just gonna throw all my work out mm. there and, you know, and it'll hope for good, the best, you know, hope and, I, for the best, yeah. and hope for the best. And it's meant to be, but I'm like, you can make your chances better yeah. by doing all those things that we're talking about. I mean, those are things that worked for yeah. me. Um, so I'm working and that's what worked for me. Exactly. Uh, and I, you know, I, but I also, like I said, I realized that there are other industries Oh yeah. and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I gave you some feedback on the talks with people from other industries and what they think, right. but it's not all that different, really. Yeah, they look for the same thing, but the, the same underlying maybe um, skill set. But I, I guess it, it, it's expressed like slightly differently in, in different industries. Um, and there, there's always yeah, going to the be little things that are different, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I talk. I, I this is a long-standing sort of not argument, but more like a discussion that I've had with my wife. And I, I would say, um, you know, what, you know, how much should you, you know, express, you know, the things that we're talking about, you know, and, you know, how much, you know, do you have to be skilled, you know, like if you had to choose one, what would you choose, you know? And it was funny because, because I feel like, um, if you don't have the skill, if you have this thing in mind, that's, looks a certain way, this character that looks a certain way or whatever, and you have no skills, anima anatomy skills, you have no character design, drawing skills, how are you ever going to show this design? Right, exactly. How is that even possible? So you definitely need the fundamentals at least to a certain point, at yeah. least. Um, and I think a lot of people, this is the most boring, hard part to do. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't want to do that. So. In the end, they go. Ah, I'm just gonna get creative. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. And then, yeah, you're creative, but it's kind of like, hey, we need this. I mean, you look at Picasso, Matisse, any of these old, you know, old school artists. I mean, they they could paint like nobody's business. But if you just looked at the abstract stage, you would think, oh, I could do that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But they went through how many years? They they knew how to do the core thing first, the techniques, before they kind of went, you know, in their own way to express how they express. So I think that no matter what you do, you are always in the work anyway. Exactly. It, it has to be, right. right? I mean, just your choice of what to do is already you. Exactly, right. It's just how far do you go yeah. in, in accordance to your skill. Right. And that will, that will change over the years, right? Um, I think it was... Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, as you get, if you, as you get good... Yeah. Definitely, right? You know, like, have at it. You know, I want to see that. Exactly. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you have to be working 10 years to do that. I mean, you know, right. but I, I'm just saying it, maybe there's something that you do that's really for pure expression. Yeah. But when you go on a portfolio hunt yeah. and for a job, then your portfolio is the stuff that will get you exactly. hired more. And you can still do the other stuff on the side, right? As your personal development, right? I mean, yeah. yeah and, and honestly, ask again, this is where you ask people exactly. for a review that has no bearings, right? If you say, hey, look, um, I want to put some of this stuff in, but I'm going to go get a portfolio review with somebody, a pro in that area, exactly. and they're going to let me know. Go get that before you go on the job portfolio, you know, like sending your stuff to jobs. 
ask those people. Yeah. That is such a good strategy. You can pay like whatever it is, hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, and you get real feedback. You people tell you don't show that because that's your weakness, or show that that's awesome, right? right? You need you need yeah. some ver you know somebody to validate what you're and doing. Be open to that. Be open to that. Uh, uh, hopefully constructive criticism right just don't don't go just to anybody who you think is famous and popular <laughs> whatever, but find somebody who who you know is an expert in that in that field and be open keep an open mind i think a lot of people um they just look for validation by 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 professionals and then once they actually get some real feedback they are kind of Uh, ignoring that and just go back to like oh but I, I want to do that anyway you don't understand me kind of thing um, so once you once you sign up for for portfolio reviews or, or do something or reach out to somebody really be open and be be polite <laughs> that sometimes yeah yeah I mean this is it. just pure etiquette I yeah, mean yeah, you exactly. know I'm sure you get a lot of, uh, asks oh, yeah, on all hey can you stuff. take a look at my stuff and and you know sometimes I do sometimes I don't depending on how busy yeah. I am uh, but I think some of your favorite artists uh, most of them if you say hey look I want to pay you yeah. for your time can I have an hour of your time uh, how much do you charge exactly. you know the chances are either they'll do it for free exactly. or they'll do it for uh, you know a very low fee or, or maybe they'll tell you their rate and then it's whatever 150 yeah, bucks exactly. but You know, it's well worth yeah. it because they've just their their feedback could save you from not exactly. getting that job. And please don't just like because a lot of people do that. They just send you they you get an email like, hey, can you look at my stuff? And then you get a link to ArtStation or whatever. And that's it. And then even sometimes if you take the time and reply and, and try to to help them, you never get you never hear anything back from them. So guys, don't do that. Right. Um Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's a great way to to wrap up this episode today. Um, one last thing okay. I wanted to mention because I, I still have that in my notes and we haven't talked about it is that um, sometimes when when I do portfolio reviews, then people keep on talking, keep on explaining and everything like, oh, this is this, this is this, this is this. Um, for our industry, I think it's important that um, you realize that you are a visual storyteller. Um, you, you don't write scripts. You don't do an audio book or whatever. You stop talking, right? Your, your, your visuals, your images <laughs> should answer all questions I have regarding this image. They should answer everything in a visual way. If it doesn't do that, then the image is not simply just not working, right? I mean, of course, mm -hmm. I should ask myself questions, but I should ask myself questions in the nature of like like oh where is this character going what is he going to experience right like i want to know more about the story that you're trying to tell in the image if i if i just look at the image and like what what, what does that do what is this supposed to be um like i can't really recognize this like how does like you said how does the spaceship land right um those kind of questions need to be answered in in visual ways and and you'll get the hang of it, how that works and, and how you can express that kind of stuff later on. But um, these are just all the little things you need to think about, right? And that's why it's, again, um, very... Um, it's better, like you said in the, big, like in the middle of the talk, that um, work, on, work on, on, on different set of skills first before you start solving all sorts of crazy design problems. Um, because... If, if you solve the other stuff well, then that will at least give you the give you like an opportunity to um, find 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 a good entry level job somewhere, right? Um, because that's that's really the goal that we're trying to um, achieve here. In yeah, this talk. yeah, absolutely. And then and, and definitely make sure that you're thinking like you're going, you know, dressed up, you know, for the party, and you know, you're not going to go in ripped jeans and all this kind of stuff. You you're going to want to put your best foot out right. there. This is important because, you know, one time you know, just remember this, the, the industry is small. So one time you, if, you, if your portfolio wasn't good or it could have been better and they looked at it and they, you know, for whatever reason, they'll they'll reject you. And, you know, the chances are uh, if you if you had a really poor showing that they'll remember right. uh, or, or or, you know, you never know. 
Um, I, I just think put your best foot forward always. Uh, ask for help when you can. Uh, and, you know, treat it as this is what it is. Uh, it's, it's the most important, you know, conduit between you and your future employer. Just make sure that they they really know who you are, what you can do, and don't shoot yourself in the yeah, foot yeah, by doing exactly. putting the right thing. Exactly. <laughs> Sounds right. Okay, great. I think that was a great discussion. Um, that's all for episode eight um, of the Art Department podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and we see you guys next week. See ya.